Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Serious with God. That is our podcast. I'm Curtis Wilson, and this is I'm Andrew Dodson. All right, and uh, our website, seriouswithgod.org, is a content website that we built just for you guys to be able to go, and hopefully it'll help you in your spiritual journey, give you some uh, insight on what God is not only doing here and now, but what he is doing in your life. Uh, also, there are study programs on our website. Um, there will soon to be some books I've written and these podcasts, uh, which are for the next few weeks going to be an accompaniment to a book I've written called Understanding the Heavens. And so uh, we've last couple of episodes, we went through chapters of that and we're going to continue along those lines today. Um, before we get started, want to tell a little bit about yourself, Mr. Andrew? Yeah, sure. Oh. Um, well, I'm excited about looking into this book. Uh, again, my name is Andrew Dodds and I'm kind of a therapist by training and I wear a lot of different hats and um, I've, I've had the opportunity to go through some of these uh, lessons as you taught these and I'm, I'm really excited to be able to dig in again to uh, strongholds right this is a good this yeah. is a good ch uh, chapter of the book um, that's what we're going to be talking about today is strongholds but uh, I'm uh, once again I'm Curtis Wilson and uh, I'm a minister uh, I have ministered apostolically in places very hard places for the last 20 something years mm -hmm. and uh when i say very hard places um those are places that most people um sort of i wouldn't say forget about but they are the places that uh become this sort of stronghold for the enemy there's there's um places within our own borders here in the u.s that uh that are just hard places to to reach for the gospel there are hard places for churches to grow and and uh so the Indian uh, reservation was the first one. That you, was the right? first one. I worked with uh, I worked with a missionary out there, just uh -huh. uh, kind of, if you call that an internship, I, I worked through him and he mentored me. And um, and so I thoroughly enjoyed being with them. And then I came to here to our area, to a, to the region known as the Mississippi Delta. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a very hard region for people to break into for mm -hmm. uh, churches. There's just a, a different culture that's there mm -hmm. in the Delta, a lot of poverty, a lot of, uh, just a lot of what we're talking about today is strongholds. Right. And so, uh, so this book and these teachings, um, come from a heart of me seeing people through the years, either being deceived mm -hmm. by the enemy or just not understanding the, the war that we're in and the battles that we face. Mm -hmm. And hopefully this book will help people, you know, to pick it up. I didn't, I purposefully did not include a lot of stories in mm -hmm. the book. It's, it's, uh, very, uh, comprehensive if you would that's that it is just uh this is this is what the scripture says about uh certain things when it comes to understanding the heavens understanding mm -hmm. the war that we're in and then here's how you deal with it but i knew that we would do these podcasts and mm -hmm. so these podcasts are going to be the accompaniment where most authors when they write a book mm -hmm. they will put in stories you know in the book and so i just thought you know what I'll do this. Uh, technology allows us to be able to come and, and tell the stories mm -hmm. because I got plenty of them through through what's happened mm -hmm. uh, as far as strongholds. But uh, but so I thought that this would be the place where we could uh, share those stories. And so yeah. anyway, yeah. I'm glad to do it. The last couple of weeks uh, we've we've dug into the book and today we're going to talk about strongholds. Um, this is something I want to read a scripture for you that I have in this chapter. And it says, um, uh, this is in Second Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 through 6. It says, Now I, Paul, myself, am pleading with you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am lowly among you, but being absent and bold toward you. But I begged you that when I am present, I may not be bold with that confidence by which I intend to be bold against some who think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. And this is Paul talking to the church, you know, at Corinth, the Corinthian church. And he's just saying to them, look, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to be as meek and, mm -hmm. and, and gentle about these things as I can. He says, for though I walk in the, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh mm -hmm. for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God bringing every thought into captivity into the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. That's second Corinthians chapter 10 verses one through six. So mm -hmm. the main point there is when he says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, mm -hmm. but against these strongholds right. that we're going to speak about today. And so, um, the, uh, you want to say something about that real quick before we, 
Not yet. You know, oh, not yet. You're holding, you're holding on to it. Okay. So a stronghold, as you see the definitions here on my computer, a stronghold, mm-hmm. the Webster's definition is a fortified place, a mm-hmm. place of security or survival, mm-hmm. a place dominated by a particular group or marked by a particular characteristic. Mm-hmm. Now, just as we were talking about, whether it be the Mississippi Delta, whether it be mm-hmm. places in America like the, the Appalachians, mm-hmm. like the, the Indian reservations where we worked, and just certain places, uh, these strongholds, you know, yes. they are produced because of the people right. that are, you know, that are in these particular yep. regions. So go ahead. You well, and so I was, uh, that's kind of where I was, I was curious if that's the one you were going to go into first. I didn't want to kind of jump the gun on that, yeah. but, you know, I've spent some time working in the Mississippi Delta too. And so that is kind of one of, one of the obvious examples that I have seen of, of kind of community based or culturally based strongholds. Right. Um, and so I, that, that was something that I had to learn sort of the hard way is that there are these, there are these systems of maintaining the way things work that keep people right. uh, locked into patterns uh, that are spiritually spiritually uh, numbing or deadening. Right, right. I right. don't, just, don't know the way it's, to put that. Well, it's just it's, it's deception. It's, it's the enemy putting things into place and right. him having that stronghold. So I, I guess for, for definition's sake, let me kind of explain what a stronghold, you know, what, what mm-hmm. I feel like. A stronghold is, by definition, it's a, it's a place of darkness mm-hmm. that is fortified by the enemy. Now, okay. that can be in your own personal you know, that can be in your mind. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, there are tons of books out there about the battlefield of the mind, right, you know, right. and basically Jesus, you know, light's good, dark, mm-hmm. bad, you know, and Jesus wants to come along and put light or the Holy Spirit rather mm-hmm. sheds light into every situation in our lives. And he wants to have dominion mm-hmm. over every, every area of our life. But what happens is a lot of times we have darkness in certain areas of our life. And that allows the enemy to just keep that stronghold going. And we're going to, you know, don't worry, we're going to explain those in just a minute. But as as an individual can have a stronghold, also a community. Right. Right? Churches can have a stronghold. Uh, communities can have strongholds. And then what happens is if there are a lot of communities joined together right. that, that work in tandem, right. you know, with those strongholds, it becomes the whole region becomes a yep. place where, where, you know, this stronghold sort of, develops itself mm-hmm. and um and this is how the enemy you know this is how he perpetuates things from mm-hmm. generation to generation mm-hmm. to generation you know um one of the things i'll and, and i'll say this about the mississippi delta which i've worked there for 20 years mm-hmm. you know of course slavery was abolished in the 1860s mm-hmm. you know <laughs> i mean right. you know but the truth is that uh, those those principalities and powers they don't know that and so it just takes on another form right and so you can't legislate out this darkness. You can't legislate out a spiritual stronghold. That's correct. You cannot legislate right. out. And you cannot. That's why us living by the law doesn't work that way right. individually either. Well, I mean, I think that's to Paul's point. Right. He has been granted authority to deal with those things. That's, that's correct. Right. As that's a, right. As a, as a spiritual believer. Right. And right. so what he's, you know, when he's saying this, hey, look, uh, we're wrestling not against flesh and blood. I understand that you Corinthians have some things going on in, you know, in the mm-hmm. church right here. Mm-hmm. But I also realize that I'm waging war against these strongholds, mm-hmm. these principalities, mm-hmm. these, these, these rulers in the high places, if you would. And so, but today we're, you know, uh, what we want to dig into is we want to dig into these strongholds. We want to talk about these strongholds and what it looks like. So what is that first? I mean, when you, uh, when you hear the term stronghold, I know what I think about, cause I, you know, wrote a chapter on it and have, taught about it for years about right. people having stronghold. What is that? You know, and, and my basic definition of it is an area of darkness that's fortified by the enemy. Right. And there may be light all around it, but that area is particularly in darkness. But what do you think about when you think of stronghold? Well, you know, I started with kind of the community and cultural <clears throat> piece, but I mean, most immediately because I deal with people one-on-one, right. you know, all the time, all day, uh, I think of them in, in our personal lives, right. Or in our family life. Um, and I think of them as places that, um, are, yeah, they're hidden, but they also keep us locked down and controlled and and, and caught in patterns that we don't always. And deception. That's right. That's really the deception are the tools around it that keep us there. That's right. right. I mean, that's kind of the thing. Um, when, when I think, I'm glad we started off with talking about cultural, you know, because there are cultural strongholds. I mean, you know, those cooperate together, I would argue. They do. That's right. I mean, without the individuals, you know, you're not just going to have. Yeah. things ruling over not, you know, right. uh, the air, right. so to speak, it's, it's individuals that mm-hmm. make these things up. So, mm-hmm. 
so what happens is uh, culturally, it's it's good probably for our viewers to know that because they probably live in an area and they wonder why things are the way they are. I mean, mm -hmm. why why can it? How can it be that uh, just like in the the Mississippi Delta, it's the breadbasket of America? Why mm -hmm. is it not one of the wealthiest places? Well, it is. It's just the way that that. Um, the the way that it's all manifest itself in the natural mm -hmm. is you know there there is a ton of you know I mean the resources there I mm -hmm. mean here in the parish where I live uh, there's a ton of natural resources mm -hmm. uh, here in Northwest Louisiana if you would mm -hmm. uh, in the Shreveport area and all that I mean there's tons of, of natural gas and mm -hmm. and timber and that kind of thing but but why is it that so many people live in a certain way and that's because of these strongholds because right. of you know the way things are but. So let's let's get into individual strongholds, okay. and that that'll help us some because I think today what we want to do, and we'll do this in a two part series. What we want to do is I want to explain strongholds, what they are, what some of them can be, mm -hmm. and then we'll come back and do another episode, and and we'll talk about how we redefine the way we think in order to combat those strongholds. Okay, okay? so you know, I mean it's it's one thing to say, okay, the Holy Spirit, you know is light and you know and a lot of people say mm -hmm. well i've given my life to the holy spirit so i should be all light but mm -hmm. we know that's not true mm -hmm. why do you still get angry why do you still i mean there's still yeah. there's still things within our heart a man yeah. can't know his heart and god takes time and we'll talk about that on the on uh, how god develops a process to take you through mm -hmm. to make sure that these strongholds are pulled down mm -hmm. you know so but let's let's get in some i i would think that the first and probably the the most major stronghold for believers which you know a large percentage of our viewing audience are, are believers i yeah. know some some are not but but uh but for believers the 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 thing that really trips us up more than anything are our traditions mm -hmm. and i don't say that as um you know some I'm not saying that about any one particular tradition. I'm mm -hmm. just saying Jesus spoke to the Pharisees. We we all we all have a little Pharisee in us, you know. Mm -hmm. We all have um, this sort of uh, tracks rails that we're running down, mm -hmm. and God has to disrupt things to make mm -hmm. us. And that's what He was doing. That's what Jesus was doing in His day in the Gospels. Mm -hmm. And you know, He talked to them about their traditions making null, I mean, of no effect, mm -hmm. the Word of God. I mean, He was, you know. Right. I, I just want to I want to tell a little anecdote. Come on, because I think this stuff gets loaded really fast. Okay, you know people think about their tradition as being somehow sacred and under attack in this kind of conversation. True, and I, I think that understanding kind of what what are we really talking about? So, um, I had this professor whose wife um, would would make a Thanksgiving dinner like her mother did, and you know. This Thanksgiving dinner, they, they, they would do turkey and things, but the big thing was they had a, uh, a big lamb roast that they would do. Like that okay. was, they would do a lamb roast. And uh, <clears throat> she had watched her mom, you know, she had grown up watching her mom do this, who watched her grandmother do this, and uh, she had kind of inherited this tradition. And so one of the steps was she would always cut the ends off the lamb roast, right, and then put it in. She saw her grandmother did it, her mom did it, and she did it. They would cut the ends off the lamb roast. One day, she's sitting down uh, with her grandmother, who is still alive, said, you know, this is how I'm doing it, like, but I'm cutting the ends off. What's the point of that? I didn't really understand. Is that to let the juices in? Um, and grandma says, well, my pan is not large enough <laughs> to take the whole lamb roast, so I cut the ends off so it'll fit, you know, to put the other ones on the <laughs> side. And it, it's just a great example of how we Granny inherit, just trying to make things that's happen. That's right. We <laughs> inherit some things, and sometimes they're useful, and sometimes if you got that's a right. pan large enough— right. You know, you don't have to cut the ends off. That's true. Right? And, you know, for us right here, it's a good point to make is that we're not we're not particularly um, coming down on anybody's traditions or right. belief system. Right. Because when you say traditions, a lot of times people, you know, I mean, some traditions are good. That's right. I mean, there, there are things that we need to be, you know, very diligent with to pass on to our children That's right. that have been passed on. I mean, mm -hmm. I do not discount. I mean, I work in a lot of communities and I do not discount that I have always entered into somebody else's labor. You know, mm -hmm. there are traditions, right. there are things that we uh, should stand upon and not try to rebuild. Every generation doesn't go need to go reinvent the wheel. That's right. So there are certain traditions that we need to keep, but we need to ask ourselves, what are the traditions? What's going on that's perhaps keeping a stronghold in my life? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's an area of darkness where it's just not working mm -hmm. for me. There's something that's not working. And so... Um, now there's a guy in the scripture that, that, uh, this is the story I want to go to in John chapter three, mm -hmm. uh, Nicodemus. Yeah. And so Nicodemus comes to Jesus at night and there's a reason John, you know, tells us that because this has to do with 
light and dark. Mm -hmm. This is when John begins to introduce the concept of light and dark. Of course, in John chapter 1, he mentions it, but here he's really got Jesus in dialogue mm -hmm. with uh, Nicodemus mm -hmm. about light and dark. You know, men love darkness rather than light, mm -hmm. he says later on in the chapter, lest they come into the light and their deeds be exposed. So, you know, the thing is that uh, we've got this guy, Nicodemus, who's coming to Jesus at night, and he's asking him about these these truths. You know, what you know, what is it? We see all of these things going on. We mm -hmm. see who you are now. Uh, you know, what is it? And Jesus says, hey, you must be born again. Well, that's just completely and totally against their belief system mm -hmm. of who the Messiah was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. You know, um, for them, the Messiah was, I'm gonna, he's going to come, he's going to set up his kingdom, mm -hmm. and he's going to do that. I mean, he, he, that's, that's sure. what he did. You know, when he ascended, that's basically what he did. Mm -hmm. But it was different than anybody thought of. Mm -hmm. And so their traditions were, they were really hindering them. And so what I, kind of the point I want to make today was, are, are our traditions hindering us from following God and doing what God has asked us to do because mm -hmm. it's, it's just simply not a part of our belief system. Now, I, I throw a little kink in it. Um, in John chapter 10, I still believe that when Jesus said uh, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, mm -hmm. I think he's talking about their traditions. I do not think he's talking about the devil personally. I know mm -hmm. the devil is behind all of it. Don't right. get me wrong. But I think he's talking about their traditions because he's addressing the Pharisees mm -hmm. there, you know, um, in that particular chapter, mm -hmm. there's a blind or the chapter before there's a blind man mm -hmm. who's blind from birth. Jesus right. heals him. And then they come and say, well, mm -hmm. you know, who did this? And then they go through the thing and they just can't believe that, that this is God. Right. You know, they, they want to believe Jesus has got a demon before they believe mm -hmm. he's, he's uh, uh, before they believe he's God right. and or before they believe he's the Messiah. Right. And so he's still addressing them when he starts talking about, I am the way, you know, I'm the door, mm -hmm. you know, I'm the way that you come to the father. You're mm -hmm. not going to get to the father without coming through me. And mm -hmm. then he talks about the thief comes to kill, steal and destroy. Mm -hmm. And that's what the thief is doing there. It's their, their thief. It, it, yes, it is the devil. I know mm -hmm. we've given him a sure. lot of credit for that, but the real thief in this case has to do with their traditions. Mm -hmm. I think just in Nicodemus's case, I, a lot of times people come to the Lord and their traditions hinder them from accepting what God is going to do in their life. Mm -hmm. So um, any thoughts on that? Well, I mean, I think we've talked a lot about, you know, how some of this looks practically as we've had people, especially during COVID, come and say, hey, I just kind of want more. You know, I want a, I want a genuine connection with the people in my church body. I want, you know, I want to be able to participate in the kingdom in a way that, that engages my whole heart right. and mind. And I want to be, I want to have a sense of purpose and a sense of meaning and direction there. And they, they kind of had highlighted for them, you know, when they were not, not able to attend church or whatever was going on that, you know, maybe this is something missing from my life. Is that the sort of thing you're talking about being hindered by tradition or am I off track there? Uh, not, um, Maybe half, maybe half of that, you okay. know, because I don't want anyone to think that their church attendance or anything like that's not what we're that's not what we're coming against. Right. It's the fact of God trying to grow you spiritually right. and get you outside of. That's correct. I mean, right. I mean, half of that is yes. I think during you know the last couple of years that God has really got His people face to face with Him. Mm -hmm. He said, "Okay, look, seek Me." You know, that's right. this is the thing. I've I've said this to somebody before, and I'll and I'll say it here. I've always wanted my children to experience the church through Jesus. Right. But I've never wanted them to experience Jesus through the, through church. the church. Yeah, right. Now, now, that may sound to some like blasphemy, but the truth is I want my kids to know Jesus. Right. And then church is a byproduct of that. It is a, where we edify one another, and we, right. we come together because we want to come together. We want to be there. Right. You get You get – a hundred people that want to be there and right. want to worship God and are free from these sort of strongholds that I'm talking about of mm -hmm. tradition and beliefs, mm -hmm. they'll allow the, the Lord to do things. But you know, a lot of times what happens is we do the same thing. We say, man, I don't know if God, one of my um, personal sort of pet peeves is when I hear people call uh, a building, mm -hmm. the house of God. Right. I mean, I know that's, you know, because people say, Oh, I've come to the house of God. Well, this is not really. I right. mean, you are the house of God. I don't mean that to be ugly to anybody's thing, but right. but the reason it's such a pet peeve is because that's what we do when we walk into a building uh -huh. that we deem as a sanctuary. All of a sudden, then we get holy. Right. 
then we're worried about it, you know. Then we're worried about what our hearts are. Then we're worried. We should have taken care of that at home. Right. And the building all becomes a place where we all congregate, mm-hmm. and it is a place where the presence of God corporately is manifest through all of us. Right. But it's a place that's completely different than what, you know, than, oh, this is the house of God. There's mm-hmm. nothing there's, there's nothing about that building that is a house of God. You mm-hmm. are the house of God. Right. And that's, I know that's splitting hairs. You know, I don't want to be like, I've heard, I've got friends that say, well, you can't go to something you are. You know, you can't go to church if you are the church. Well, I mean, I get that, but I don't want to be that dogmatic about things. Right. I want to say, look, we need to we need to be the people of God and allow our lives to experience some things mm-hmm. that perhaps, you know, perhaps there are things in your life that you haven't experienced that you look in the scriptures. And I mean, I know a lot of people denominationally who just say, well, God don't do that anymore. Right. Well, that's not fair. Right. No, that's not fair to the, to the Holy spirit to say, well, he don't do that anymore. Right. He doesn't heal anymore. And he doesn't do miracles. And he doesn't do well, that's come on now. I mean, then he's not God. He's the same yesterday and today and forever. Correct. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. so he, mm-hmm. my traditions would make, that of no use if he really needed to do a miracle, you know, in our lives. What's interesting about that to me too, just in particular, the kind of the miracles piece, a lot of people, whatever their denominational tradition will say, but I've, I've, I know people that I've trust or I've heard stories from people that I've trust, whether they be missionaries in Africa or whatever, that I know that stuff happens somewhere sometimes, Right, right. but there's almost this unspoken tradition. Let's continue with that language that it just doesn't really happen here. And I think, in this domain, yeah, and right? I think we say that to ourselves so that we don't have to be responsible for it. Hmm. I think uh, personally, I've I for years, okay, I've heard missionaries say that, like, mm-hmm. man, God moves over here in this, and He heals people and does all these things overseas, mm-hmm. but He doesn't do it here in America. Well, well why? Mm-hmm. I think because as as the Western world, we don't want to be responsible for that. Hmm. Say I think, more about what responsible yeah, okay. is. <laughs> what responsible is, is if God heals you, if God sets you free, if God does those things, then it's your responsibility to pray for people in that manner. It's okay. your responsibility to say, you know what, Andrew's, you know, he's got a problem today, so I'm going to pray for him, mm-hmm. and we're going to see him demonically delivered, or mm-hmm. we're going to see him, mm-hmm. and then now I'm responsible for that. Mm-hmm. Now I've got to say, okay, I've got to, and I think the stronghold, I'll just say it here on camera, why don't we, the stronghold in America is our pride. It's us thinking that we don't have these issues, and that's the stronghold. That's the things that that's our belief system. Our you know I say traditions are our belief system. That is, oh that don't you know when I tell people about um, whether it be an Indian reservation or the Delta, or I can tell them about Africa. I mean, you tell them about Africa all day long, and they think, man, that's just groups of people with demons, right? But then you start talking about that here, and they're like, oh man, nobody has you know no answer, but. I mean, we're probably some of the, the most vile and wicked people on the planet. I've been all over the planet preaching the gospel. Right. And I would say Americans are pretty wicked. I mean, and I'm not, I'm not talking about you and I, or I ain't, I'm not talking about even church people right now, but right. I'm talking about the culture as a whole. Right. So we've got to face the facts. Right. That something's going on. I mean, what's, what's happening here? Well, maybe our traditions of saying, well, we're just going to, you know, this is what we're going to do, and we're not really going to go outside of this. Maybe we need to break those traditions. And that's not just in the area of spiritual, like, manifestations. So let's just have kind of a conversation. So do you think that some of those strongholds are in the shape of keeping keeping us in the trenches and not kind of pushing back against those pieces in in our country and our lives? I think so. I think it's I think it's a good way for the enemy to. Uh, keep us isolated. Right. Keep us in. So, you know, first of all, right. if we, if, you know, one of the things, and um, Lord knows our viewers have heard me say this a million times, but it's self life. Right. If self life is not dead, sure. then you're going to insulate. And I think we're so, uh, as Americans, we, we so want to keep that sort of self life, the way things are going. Let's get back to normal. Let's get these things, you know. Well, mm-hmm. I don't know that God wants things back to normal. I think He wants to break some of the traditions. Mm-hmm. Um, so hold on, let me, okay. let me clarify. So you're saying that <clears throat> sometimes tradition is is one of the functions it serves is to protect self life. I like think so. Those rhythms. That's right. I think it yeah. keeps. I think it's what it did in the scriptures. I, I base that on when Jesus is standing before these people. I mean, we look at these and we look at it two thousand years later and go, "What could these guys not see?" Yeah. How is this not obvious? Like, how is this not obvious right. that this is the Christ? Right. But we all do it. Right. We all do. We look at things. I mean, you know, I've been a part of, of certain things, uh, revivals, if you would, or moves of the spirit. And people would look at it and go, 
oh, they're just crazy or whatever, you know, and it's like, why don't you join in? Right. Why don't you join in to see if it is or not? I mean, right. I'd rather take that whole stance of, hey, guys, if it's not a God, it won't last. You know, I mean, I, I would want to kind of get in there. Well, and I think that's, that's kind of, and I don't want to get us too far afield on this, but when I was talking about the Delta, what shocked me is when we would go into communities, usually with the intention of, you know, feeding hot meals, praying for people, passing out Bibles, you know, giving away some shoes, and gathering the church together to help them do that. Right, To kind right. of help catalyze Because that's what we do, right? Their efforts. The church. How many <clears throat> churches just said, nah. Right. You know, we just, just don't, keep, we're keep, just not really interested in that whole being that which is you know our evangelism in in general we could, that's right and not, that's not to say they need to get on board with our thing but i mean no. we were going to towns of 1200 people or 2000 people right. and it's not like there's a lot of other things going on that they're right. they're involved right. in so you know so. so your traditions are keeping you in the box if you would right and so right you know uh god has to so that's that's one i know we got kind of out in the weeds on that sure. one but that's one of the strongholds it's probably one of the major strongholds that we get caught up in, you know, when I say a stronghold, once again, this is an area of darkness within our own heart, right? in our own mind, in our own right. heart, an area of darkness that the enemy has fortified. That's right. And God has to do something about it. Right. Let me give one personal example. Please. So Helen, my wife, and I don't think okay. she'll mind me sharing this, but for years she would just say, well, I don't hear from God the way you do. Right. Right. Like, I just don't, like, I don't, I don't understand that. I don't. Mm-hmm. Um, I would argue that was a personal stronghold. That's correct. That's right. right. And, you know, over the last several years, God has done a lot of things in her life, and, you know, she's really sought after him, and those have been broken. Right. And I'll tell you, at this point, she hears from God probably better than I do on a, on a daily basis. Like, she has an intuition that's just very, gotcha. you know, sensitive to, to what God's doing. And, and I just think it's, it's an example of how a, a stronghold can be fortified by beliefs, and, like, you, you can't encounter God as a result. That's, that's that right. It, it keeps right. it. The, Jesus said it makes the word of, of God of no effect. Huh. So so God's trying to, I mean, just like with Helen, I mean, God's trying to speak. Uh-huh. But if you're saying, well, God don't speak to me that way, well, he won't. Or if you say God doesn't heal or God doesn't do right. this, and it's not, this is not just about the miraculous part of things. Sure. This is, I mean, I'm saying this stronghold can be anything. It can be just your traditions. It could be, you know, um, well, God doesn't work this way. I mean, you know, like, Yes, God may do those things in church service, but I'm at work right now. Right. Okay. Right. And God doesn't do that. We, right. compart- we compartmentalize right. God and say, well, you know, and you may have a coworker or someone that, that needs, and you're just like, let me try to see if they'll come to church with me. Right. You know, right. and like, um, and I'll tell a story about my wife since we're telling wife stories this morning. Is that okay? Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, uh, when Tabitha was in beauty school, she went to beauty school uh, with a girl who was a practicing uh, Wiccan, you know, witch. And, uh, and so she was all in all kinds of witchcraft and things. Mm-hmm. And uh, anyway, uh, T- Tabitha didn't know when this girl, I t- long, I'll try to make it as short a story as I can. One day, Tabitha missed work and, and things were going on with her. Mm-hmm. And we prayed at the, at the house. It was physical. You know, there's some mm-hmm. physical ailments going on with Tabitha. Mm-hmm. And I prayed for her. And the Lord showed Tabitha that it was that girl. And she was practicing witchcraft against her. Mm-hmm. And Tabitha got up and went to school that day. Mm-hmm. And the girl saw her and immediately ran out the door. Hmm. And then a few days later, they ended up talking, and the girl said, you weren't supposed to be at school. And hmm. that showed me that this God that you're serving obviously has more power than what I'm doing. Wow. So talk to me about it. Well, that's powerful. Right. Because God is showing himself strong to this girl. Uh-huh. Now, Tabitha, all she knew was, come go to church with me. Right. That was not the answer. As a matter of fact, it's a good thing that the Holy Spirit supersedes us. Right. Like, like you know what I mean? That he right. goes beyond us right, right. when he wants to reach somebody. Right. Because that would have been an epic failure. Sure. This girl comes to church with us where we were going to church at the time. And it was, I mean, it's a great church. Everything was good. But this wasn't what that girl needed. That girl didn't need church. Right. She needed discipleship. She needed Tabitha to be in her life. Right. To help her, to disciple her. But right. we didn't know, how, Tabitha didn't know how. Right. So it was basically like, come go to church with me. Because right. we don't want the responsibility of discipling somebody. Right. Or we don't know how, or we just don't believe we can do it. Right. And that might have been sure, more than sure. anything. That's our, That comes back to the stronghold. Of, well, there's I, lot, I was going to say, this. there's lots of lies tied up in <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, a lot of lies tied yeah. up in there. Well, I can't do this. I can't disciple somebody. Sure you can. Right. You know? I mean, all you got to do is say, this is what Jesus did for me. Let's read the scripture together and find out. You don't have to know everything to disciple somebody. Right. So anyway, um, this girl says to Tabitha, she says, uh, 
why did you ask me to go to church? Is that all you have? Like, is that all you're going to do is ask me to go? I don't want to go to church. I mean, she came to church with us, but sure. it didn't. She's like, I don't want to go to church with you. I want to know this Jesus that you're serving. Boy, that's messed up, isn't it? Like the fact that, I mean, we're, we've come a long way in 20-something years, sure. 25 years ago. Sure. We've come a long way. But, man, that's kind of crazy that we couldn't get this girl to where she needed to be, which was to Jesus, the feet of the king. Right. You know, here's what we need to deliver her, right. not to the church, because right. that was our answer. Right. Was we got to sure. get her there and let somebody else do it. That's right. And so. Well, I mean, I think just to kind of put a pin in that, the letting somebody else do it is at the core of all that. That's at the core of all of it, because right. we feel inadequate. That's right. To take care of it, or we just don't want the responsibility of it. Well, sure. Years later, this girl, as a matter of fact, she's in the ministry now. This really? girl is still, this girl's still uh-huh. serving the Lord. Her kids are serving the Lord. The last time we saw her, she stopped by just to tell us, thank you for helping me. I mean, uh-huh. we finally got on track and right. helped her out and, you know, uh-huh. figure some things out. But, but it was, we were terrible at it, you know, in the sense of we had traditions and things that were, sure. you know, that were a blockage. Right. To, and, and I'm not telling you don't invite people to church, but that's not the answer. That's You're, a good thing to do. It's just a, It's just not the answer. The not an, sufficient. That's right. And so right. what happens is, in that case, it was destroying what this girl needed. But right. God, you know, God dealt with it, and it was okay. But he, we should learn from it. We don't have to go through that all the time, mm-hmm. you know. So that's an example. So traditions and beliefs, these are a stronghold. These become a stronghold. It, it, it becomes a blockage to what we feel like God can do outside of that. Right. And it becomes this fortified place within us. So, so let me let me hit these other ones uh, for just a second. The second one is wealth. Okay. Okay. Wealth can become a stronghold for mm-hmm. us. Okay. And a lot of people, a lot of our viewers say, well, that counts me out. I'll, <laughs> I'll take a break for a minute because I don't have wealth. Well, truth is, though, that, that uh, the rich young ruler, there's a story in Luke 18 where the rich young ruler, he comes to Jesus and, and he tells Jesus all these things he's doing and then, Jesus says, okay, go sell all your possessions and give them to the poor. And the guy walks away. He, he doesn't do it. It's like, right. you know, it becomes a stronghold for him, the things he possesses. Uh-huh. And I think wealth goes beyond money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some of us are wealthy in our intellect. Mm-hmm. Like we feel like, and it becomes a stronghold for us. Sure. It's just, when I say wealth, I'm talking about things that we've accumulated. Go ahead. You want to hit on that? No, no, no. I mean, okay. I think manna is another yeah. word, right? right. Right. Mammon. Mammon. Yeah, mammon. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, mammon, yeah. Mammon. And so, yeah, I mean, the scripture talks about mammon. But but once again, it comes down to these things I've accumulated. Right. Okay. Wealth can be right. something that I've accumulated and I'm not willing to, to do away with. It becomes a stronghold. Right. It becomes a stronghold for us. And so uh, that's one of the things that uh, that's one of the things that we uh, and then the, the third one is this and uh, that I touch on here. It's relationships. Mm-hmm. Okay, so relationships, not only can your traditions and your belief become a stronghold, uh, wealth, the things that you own, the things that you accumulate, that can become a stronghold. Uh-huh. How we know something's a stronghold is Jesus is trying to break into this, and we just refuse to let it go. Yeah. You know, this is like this guy's refusing to let his, the things he's accumulated go. Uh-huh. Sometimes we refuse to let things. So, but the third thing here uh, has to do with relationships. And when I was uh, when I was young in the faith, the Lord uh, really spoke to my heart and said this scripture. He said, "Let the dead bury the dead." Mm-hmm. And I and I, you know, God sometimes He will speak things and then He'll unpack them later on. Mm-hmm. You know, He speaks to you and mm-hmm. and then He unpacks them. And what that meant was what He was saying was that 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 those who are walking outside of my covenant, mm-hmm. uh, you're with me now, mm-hmm. and let them bury that old man. Mm-hmm. Your old man is dead, mm-hmm. and let them bury him, and you move on. Mm-hmm. You, but now, does that say that every relationship that I had when I came to know the Lord that I needed to get rid of? No, mm-hmm. not at all. Mm-hmm. But but the truth was they couldn't become strongholds. Mm-hmm. And I know tons of people yes. who have allowed relationships to become a stronghold. It's this place of darkness. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the the millennial term for that would be toxic. Mm, and, right. and, and that the yeah, new, yeah. Wait, you want to say something about that? Because well, that's kind of I mean, your I just expertise. see it all the time. Yeah. I mean, a lot of times it's a, a boyfriend or a you know, a parent or whatever. And, you know, it, it sometimes shocks me the degree to which God will lead someone through cutting out toxic relationships. Right. You know, I've had people who are, who are just very faithful and prayerful and loving and kind who have to cut off, a, cut off a family member or, you know, in, you know, end a relationship that, that is tough because it's sucking life and, that's it's, right. it's, and it's, it's keeping it's, them locked down. Right. right. And, you know, I, th- I think probably some of our viewers might say, well, you're supposed to be, you know, in the world, but you're not supposed to be of the world. Right. And so the thing is that 
Does God want us to have a relationship? Sure, with yes. people that are worldly. But when those relationships go past the boundaries mm -hmm. to where they become a stronghold, mm -hmm. that's when we can't let them, that's when they become an area of darkness in our life. Well, I think so, he's, I mean, I'm getting out on, on some theological limbs here, maybe, but I think he's more concerned in his children's freedom than in the look of a relationship. Right, that's correct. Right, yeah, that's right. I mean, that, that's what I've seen in practice. Right, as right. he leads people to do these things. Right. So, um, the story I use here in the in the chapter of in the book, I, I use the story where you know Jesus uh, the Jesus tells the story where uh, the master's inviting all these people to a supper, uh -huh. you know, and they give excuses of why they can't come. Uh -huh. And I think uh, one of them, you know, is this this guy who talks about uh, let me go bury my father or something like you know, and then and you realize that these are all. These are there in the scriptures. These are strongholds. This is right. something that right. this is something that, that this person is dealing with. And that's when Jesus says, you know, let the dead go bury, bury the dead. Uh -huh. These relationships for us, relationships uh, become this this place where we like them, uh -huh. and, and even if they're they have darkness in them. And I'm not talking about a lot of times. I think using the word toxic, people think about abusive right. situations. That's right. not really what it is. Right. It may just be that it's not life giving. That's right. It's not. Christ centered mm -hmm. in the sense of it's not, once again, I come back to that light and dark. Right. It's an area of darkness in your life. I mean, when you go to a certain friend or you're in this certain relationship, is there, is there darkness in that relationship? And right. are you willing to hold on to that darkness past what Jesus is trying to do? And he may be trying to get you to, right. to say, Hey, take your hands off of that relationship. Yeah. John Eldridge had a great line that, that highlights, I mean, it applies to a lot of situations, but he said, if, if there's something in your life that is not giving life, that is, that is not life giving, drop it like a snake. Right. right. And so, I mean, it just kind of draws a bright line with like not having to parse every little detail. If you have a relationship that is, that is not life giving, that is bringing darkness into your life. It's like, right. And there's a, there's a difference between, I think, you know, it, it's will I, I want to note it at this juncture, but there's a difference between, you helping somebody, you know, cause there's certain, I mean, you do that sure. as a therapist. I mean, right. that is, you know, that's what you do. I do it as a minister, right. but people do it every day. They may have a coworker that, yeah, it's not life giving, but they're helping them. They're sure. doing something, but that's different than purposefully having this relationship that, that is in darkness. That and is, yoking yourself together. And yoking yourself yeah, up with these right. people. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so what happens is as we yoke ourselves up with people, all of a sudden there's this area of fortification where the enemy gets in there and mm -hmm. he starts to sort of fortify and, and there's this darkness. Mm -hmm. And so God wants to break all of these strongholds mm -hmm. and that's, that's what he does in our lives. Mm -hmm. He comes through and he begins to break them. So, uh, but that was um, kind of you got any more thoughts on strongholds. Lots uh, more, but I think we're going to get into uh, how God deals with that's them. right. And yeah. that's going to be our next episode. I do, you know, didn't want to get too lengthy on mm -hmm. this one. I wanted to make a couple of short episode so that we could get into that i want to just really explain this episode uh what is a stronghold mm -hmm. you know what how do we define that and do i have and some people may be listening man i don't have any strongholds but remember once again it's a fortified place it's a place that's dominated mm -hmm. by the enemy it's mm -hmm. a place where god himself is not able to rule and reign in mm -hmm. your life mm -hmm. and those come through you know like i said the possession of things through our traditions and mm -hmm. our beliefs mm -hmm. that come through relationships there's mm -hmm. these areas and that that's not a comprehensive, you know, that's not a, right. you know, that's not the complete uh, list of strongholds, sure. if you want to say it like that. But, but these are some, some, gives you some things to think about. Like how, well, I think these are the ones that we don't discuss a lot. That's right. Part, that's right, right. That we don't, we mm -hmm. don't talk about that a lot. And so mm -hmm. really we need to, walking away from this, we need to talk about, you know, to ourselves or introspect, if you would, or mm -hmm. analyze and say, mm -hmm. hey, do I have any of these in my own life? Right. Do I have some? You know, do I have some traditions or beliefs? Because it's going to be huge, mm -hmm. you know, maybe that God's trying to get me out of that, mm -hmm. are, that are hindering mm -hmm. what he wants to do in my life. Mm -hmm. Because I think, well, this is what he has to do, A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. And then he comes along and he does it. And I'm not talking about things apart from Scripture. I'm mm -hmm. talking about, you know, this is he's going to do something completely different than he's, than mm -hmm. he's done before in my life. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and also, what about the things we've accumulated? You mm -hmm. know, maybe they, maybe they become such a... Uh, such a wealth for us. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe we're not wealthy in the sense of mm -hmm. being wealthy, but maybe we have things that we've accumulated and we're just not willing to let that. I love uh, your example of knowledge. Right. Right. Oh, yeah. Or, intellect. or intellect. I mean, yeah. That's right. I mean, uh, that yeah. becomes a place, a stronghold for people. It mm -hmm. becomes, you know, it becomes a, a wealth, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to, a store of treasure, a store of treasure. That's right. what wealth is a store of treasure. Right. And we store up and, and, 
I mean, you see, you've, you've probably seen this and dealt with this before, and I know I have, where people in their intellect, they are, they are so intellectual mm-hmm. that God can't go outside of that. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, man, you're going to have to, you're gonna have to put down what, you know. Some epistemic humility. Yeah. Right. And, you know, there's a, there's a, a story in the Old Testament where, you mm-hmm. know, Naaman the Syrian, you know, he comes mm-hmm. and, uh, He's need to be healed of leprosy, if you right. recall. And I think it was Elisha says, you know, hey, go bathe and, seven uh, times. Yeah, yeah, go bathe seven times in the Jordan. Mm-hmm. It's like, wait a minute, you know, his reasoning, his like, that's weird. Yeah, he goes over. Yeah, <laughs> right. he goes like, I got beautiful, pre- you know, pretty places to do this right. in, in my home country. Why do I want to do it in this ugly you right. know, river? And so, uh, but then somebody says, well, if he'd asked you to do something hard, you know, if he stand on your head or whatever, you'd have done it. Right now, I tell you, you get in the water right. seven times. Right. I mean, it's leprosy. You know, yeah. don't you want it's, it's so it's the same way for us. Intellect can become a wealth of hey, this is what Jesus does, and he sure. don't do that. And he, sure. you know, and I, I think we could be splitting hairs a little with the traditions, but I don't think so. I think our intellect, I think especially in America, we develop so much because we got all this information coming at us, and we develop mm-hmm. this intellect. I mean, uh, my wife, I joke. This is the wife morning of joking. I joke with her about uh, she's always getting on the web and these and stuff like when she's got mm-hmm. something going on with her. Right. You know, it's like, man, that's so detrimental because then the doctor can't tell you that. Right. It's like, well, what about it? What about that? I bet they get those guys. It's right. Here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like what I read be, on web and be like somebody right. coming to you uh, for a therapy and they've already went, you know, oh, sure. done this online therapy. Oh, yeah. You know, this is what's wrong with me kind yeah. of thing. And you're like, well, this no, is I have it happen all the time. Yeah. I, I just say, do you want to do this or you want me to? Right. right. That's exactly, you know, so <laughs> the thing is though, that your intellect can become that stronghold, mm-hmm. but, and, and also, uh, you know, we want to talk about the fact that, um, that relationships become strongholds mm-hmm. and we need to be willing to take our hands off of them and allow God to bring the light. Now we'll say this about all the relationships. When I first, came to the Lord, mm-hmm. I had to release a lot of relationships because those were world, worldly relationships. Mm-hmm. I mean, those were guys that we, we you know, we partied a lot. We mm-hmm. did stuff in our younger days. And so I let those go. But then there was an the opportunity to go back and be around those people mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. And it's not, a, it doesn't affect me. Right. Like at that time, it would have affected me. It was a stronghold. These were relationships, people I loved, people mm-hmm. I deeply cared about that I spent years with. Right. And, uh, but my relationship with the Lord was, was, numero uno at that time mm-hmm. like i need to walk with the lord into eternity and mm-hmm. i don't know that i could do this because these relationships would be as strong oh man just do this or man just do that you know and it becomes this area of darkness mm-hmm. which we which we would call toxic now they didn't mm-hmm. have that word back right. then but uh or you know i mean they didn't have that term right uh but it would have become toxic but the truth was that i needed to to allow those to not be a stronghold in my life, and then I could go back into them. So right. it's not saying you'll never have wealth, you don't have traditions, and you don't have right. uh, relationships. It's just saying they don't need to be a stronghold of darkness because then the enemy works in these places. So yeah. When they can't be exalted above, above God himself. Right, and right. that's that's what we're really the point we want to make. When we talk about understanding the heavens, the reason I put this chapter in on strongholds is because I see that a lot in people. They just They don't get any further than this with understanding the heavens. Because so, so let me give you one. I think this is a litmus test for okay. something, a stronghold. And it's something that's I good. ask that's clients good. a lot. It's because uh, you just said it, you said, it's not saying you can't have wealth. It's not saying you can't right. have tradition. It's not saying you can't have relationships. Obviously the question for me always is if God appeared before you and asked you to let go of this, would you do it? That's good. I mean, right. Well, it tells you where your heart is on it. Right. You know, because I don't think I don't think you can overcome strongholds until the answer is yes. Right. Right. If I, am I willing to hear? Am I willing to lay it down? Am I willing to go where God leads? If you're in that posture, God can take right. you there. So in our next podcast, our next we're, we're going to move into that. Get, That's we're right. We're going to get into okay. how God breaks that cycle. Right. Of having these strongholds. Because each of us, hey, look, right now there's no finger pointing here. It is saying I've had strongholds in my Absolutely. life. That's how I wrote this yeah. was, man, we've all, and I, th- I hope we've given an example of that, mm-hmm. you know, of how we can, you know, we can have these strongholds in our life, an area mm-hmm. of fortified mm-hmm. darkness. Well, once a person's got strongholds in their life and you take um, something uh, as simple as uh not simple, but something as basic is is racial prejudice. Sure, and we develop that through you know whatever means that we you know that could that could be whatever means, and we have this fortified place where we are prejudiced mm-hmm. against a certain race of people. Sure, well uh, that perpetuates like here mm-hmm. we live in the South. Well, mm-hmm. that's told you know like I told you, and I told you, and I told you, you know, mm-hmm. and it, 
like we hand that down the line for mm -hmm. so long, all of a sudden you got this ruling right. principality, if you mm -hmm. would, and that's what's going on. The whole region becomes a stronghold mm -hmm. because of that, and that's how these things happen. And so um, if we want to know how to break things, we're going to talk about breaking things in our own life, but we're also going to talk about as we break them, we can break them over our churches, over our communities, and mm -hmm. over our regions. And that's, you know, that's really the key here right. is to break the strongholds. So uh, any last thoughts before we part ways? Now, I mean, I'd say one more piece, and I'm sure this is going to lead us into next week, okay. that, you know, because some of this language can sound esoteric, but really breaking of strongholds is a, is a component of sanctification. That's right. You know, this is that, as right. God reveals truth, and he grows us and matures us and sets us increasingly free, and we go from, you know, from grace to grace. And, right. Um, anyway, so that's what, you know, for, for us, we need to know that that's the path that God's got his own, which mm -hmm. is to free us up that's from right. these things. I hope that this has been enlightening for somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, I hope that our, our viewers out there will say, man, yeah, let me see if I, you know, let me go back and, and test my heart and check my heart. And as you read scripture, maybe God speaks something to you and says, you know, hey, this is I still do these things. I mm -hmm. still do this, or mm -hmm. I still do this, or maybe this relationship, or maybe these things that mm -hmm. you've accumulated. Maybe the Lord will speak to somebody through it. And so we're so glad to be with you guys here today. Seriouswithgod.org is our website. Um, you can go there and find uh, different materials that we've written. Also, these podcasts. You can go to our YouTube channel, uh, Serious With God, and subscribe. You'll get uh, a notification each time that... Uh, we put on a new video. You can also subscribe on our website, and we'll let you know whenever we put new content on. Thanks for uh, being here with us today, guys. Uh, thank you, Andrew, for the, yeah, the good feedback. Enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you guys next week.